Have you ever heard of names like Mikhail Tal, Bobby Fischer, or Mikhail Botwinik? If your answer is no, I feel very sorry that you belong to the group of people not particularly interested in chess, one of the most beautiful games, I know I'm biased, that humanity has ever created. And you know what? If you don't play chess, at least from time to time, and at least as a small hobby, I highly encourage you to start playing. Over the course of the next several minutes, as an ordinary chess enthusiast, without any significant chess titles, I'll try to convince you why. Before we get to the specific reasons why you should consider starting to play chess, it doesn't hurt to look back at the history of this game, which is considered to be an art by many people. Chess as we know it today was born out of the Indian game called Chaturanga before 16, 600s AD. Uh, the game then spread throughout Asia and Europe in the coming centuries, and one of the masters of the game at the time was uh, a Spanish priest named Ruy Lopez. Later on, the 19th century marked the introduction of chess clocks to competitive play. Uh, the most famous games of that period were complete attacking games. Strong defensive ideas hadn't been learned yet. So if a player wasn't sacrificing their pieces right and left, trying to checkmate their opponent in a violent manner, then it wasn't a fine game at all. All in all, humans came to the 20th century, the age of mega grandmasters like Bobby Fischer, Anatoly Karpov, only to be welcomed by the 21st century, the age of super computer chess engines like Stockfish, which, as of now, can defeat any human being with absolutely any degree of chess prodigy. So by now, we have seen a pretty much quick history of chess, haven't we? But are we actually decided as to whether the game, this chess is a game, sport, art, or science? Well, personally for me, chess is a battle between two minds. So it must be a sport. Uh, because in other sports like boxing, for example, more than anything else, the physicality of two or more athletes is assessed, while in chess, it's the intelligence that's put on for a test. And there are several reasons why I believe everyone should be able to play at least a little chess. First of all, ch chess teaches us how to win and lose. Of course, everybody likes to win, but it is just as important in life to, to learn how to accept defeat. Uh, most importantly, we try to learn from those losses and come back as a strong player. Just as in life, when we, confront, when we are confronted with failure, we try to get back up and come stronger and wiser. So winning with grace is an important character trait that chess can teach us. Second of all, chess can help people realize the consequences of their actions. The, there was this important chess boom around the world with children learning how to play chess better and getting high ratings. But even more important than that is the fact that chess can teach people from an early age that their choices have consequences, both good and bad. Thinking your moves ahead and trying to play the best move that you can is rewarding while playing too quickly and rushing your decisions can have negative repercussions. I've seen this work out so many times in my own life. I work part-time as an English teacher, and over the course of five years of a teaching career I've had, roughly 10% of all of my students knew at least some chess, and a few truly excelled at it. And over the years, what I have come to notice is truly profound. From my observations, it's become clear that uh, all of those chess-involved students did a much better job when it comes to improving their receptive skills like listening and reading compared to those who didn't know chess at all. So learning from mistakes is another trait that chess can help us. Besides, chess can help us focus better. As one of the greatest chess players in the history of the game, Bobby Fischer said, chess demands total concentration. A chess player can make moves like a grandmaster for 30 moves and then get distracted on move 31 and make an elementary blunder that loses the game. 
This intense focus is useful even in our daily life when we're confronted with school assignments, daily tasks, and uh, deadlines. Plus, when playing chess, your brain will be challenged to exercise logic, develop pattern recognition, and make decisions uh, visually, both visually and analytically. Adding to that, chess can be enjoyed by any age. And as a result, these brain exercises can be a big part of the health of your brain. An active brain is a healthy brain after all. And right at this point, I have to mention that when I was doing research for this speech, I was struck to find out that there seems to be a gender disbalance in top-level chess, with women considering only about 15% of the international rated players. Uh, using a data set of more than 180,000 players and 8 million tournament rated tournament games, uh, the evidence was found to support a stereotype threat effect for females. So what does it mean? It means that female players, chess players, tend to perform worse against male opponents than female opponents. Of course, there is much to discover about what play the biggest roles in this performance and participation gaps in chess. However, the biggest explanation seems to point to this. Culturally, chess is seen as an activity for men mostly. As a result, fewer women are encouraged to play, fewer take up the pastime, and fewer remain in it long enough to excel. So logically, fewer women playing means fewer strong female players. Well, yes, there might be other differences related to physiology. But at this point, it's a matter of speculation as the social factors are much greater contributors. But for us, it could well mean a bigger wish to try to encourage more females to take up the habit of playing chess. Because culturally, we have a great potential to uh, become great players at chess. Because Uzbek players on average have, have very high ratings on international FIDE chess system, which slowly, yet confidently, has been rising over the last decade, uh, climbing up to the record of 22nd place in the world as of May 2022. So now, most of you may be thinking that, so this guy is trying to persuade us to start playing chess. Should we, should we go and, should we try and go professional too? Well, this is an interesting question indeed, because there's a certain cost people have to pay if they want to go pro. Because uh, becoming a chess professional at an international arena could very well mean dedicating an almost entire life to the analysis of everything related to chess, which can be pretty heavy going for many. In addition to that, many great players becoming chess professionals could potentially mean a loss of great minds for other endeavors in the future. I'll give you an example here. If you remember, I mentioned a guy called Emmanuel Lasker in the beginning of my speech. So the Emmanuel Lasker was the second world champion in chess in the world, and also the longest reigning champion of the world who kept his throne untouched for well over 25 years. And his friend, whom you might know very well, most probably, because of false quotations by him, Albert Einstein, was famously quoted saying that, a man of such extreme talents, like Emmanuel Lasker, it's a shame that he wastes his time on something as useless as chess. Well, it's intriguing, indeed, to think about what would have happened if these grand, mega grandmasters had applied their genius in a different field. Let's get back to the example of Emmanuel Lasker. Let's imagine that he indeed tried to do something different and let's say, uh, at least did some research in more science-related subject like physics or math, then it would be very reasonable to presume that he could have led us to more scientific discoveries, thus making the world a better place. All in all, if we combine all the benefits coming from chess, we'll get this wonderful cocktail. Uh, essentially, chess is a tool that aids our intelligence and thinking. It helps us build, it, it builds great planners out of us. It helps us become more patient. It helps us become more creative. It helps us be, uh, keep our brains healthy. Oh gosh, so many benefits that I, it, it, it makes me want to uh, 
forget chess altogether so that I can learn it back again to get these benefits yet again. Most importantly, whatever the career path you have chosen, chess can give you an extra boost to your skills. So let's learn to play chess and try to perform our best in everything we do so that we can make this world a better place than it is now. Thank you very much.